financial period the same rules as per our consolidations, our group. Now, revaluation of assets. Now, this is another rule that you need to please study and know. When we look at revaluation of assets, they can either be a revaluation at acquisition or a revaluation after acquisition. When we look at at acquisition, you need to treat the assets and liabilities as if this is an asset or a liability of the foreign operation. Therefore, all assets and liabilities at that date, guys, important now with your dates, should be translated at a closing rate. If the asset or liability has been revalued after date of acquisition, the method of translation will have an impact on the random amount of your revaluation surplus. Now, let's look at this in our analysis of owner's equity. Now, remember, when we have a foreign operation, you will have to include a total for your foreign currencies, the rate that you're going to use, and when you translate, Late this to rand your rand value. Now remember, we have identified that there can be a revaluation either one at acquisition or two after acquisition. Now look at the revaluation at acquisition for me. Number one, very similar to your RFRS three rules. At acquisition, we will have to include our revaluation surplus or you will identify that they do call this fair value adjustments as well. And as per our rules of IS21, we need to translate this at our acquisition rate, the rate at acquisition date. And you are able to identify that this revaluation surplus will be part of our at acquisition assets and liabilities. Because we add this in our at acquisition. Okay. Now, number two, if you look at the revaluation surplus after acquisition, important, the rate that we will use will be the rate at revaluation date. Now, what is the difference between these two transactions? If we have a revaluation surplus at acquisition, there will not be a separate FCTR account due to the revaluation. Okay, we will not have a separate FCTR account due to revaluations. If we have a revaluation surplus, in our since period, the period after acquisition. This will result in a movement in our FCTR account. You okay, guys, we are going to look at an example. This will result in a movement in our FCTR account. Why? Because we are going to use the date or the rate at revaluation date. Okay. Okay, so guys, this is the two differences. If there's a revaluation at acquisition, this will not have an effect on our FCTR account. If there's a revaluation after acquisition, it will have an effect on our FCTR account. Before we move on, let's just have a look at this analysis of owner's equity. Okay, so guys, look at it. At acquisition, your normal RFRS3 principles. Now I'm going to include this in pink for you to be able to follow with me. At acquisition, your normal RFRS3 principles. Therefore, you will have to identify if there's either goodwill to be recognized or a gain on bargain purchase. Now in our since period, remember our since period, you are going to add your retained earnings or profit, revaluation surplus, intra-group transactions, and so forth. Now, remember, we will then have to use the rates as per 
IS21 to translate this into Rand values. Now, another rule that you need to know is that at the end of each year, you need to translate your foreign currency at a spot rate to Rand value. And then the difference, guys, do you see the difference between the total that we recognized in our Rand value column, guys, this total here on your right hand side, and the Rand value due to our spot rate. This will be our FCTR account. Goodwill. Now, this is another rule that you need to study. When there's goodwill at acquisition, we need to treat this as an asset of the foreign operation. Now, what does this mean? The goodwill should be expressed in a foreign currency and translated at a closing rate. Therefore, when you look at our analysis of owner's equity, at acquisition date, if we recognize goodwill, remember guys, goodwill, how do you recognize goodwill? When you determine your consideration exceeds your net assets at acquisition, goodwill will be recognized. Now, this goodwill at acquisition, in terms of IS21, we will treat this as a separate asset. Therefore, in the since period, you need to add your goodwill line in terms of your FCTR again. Now, what does this mean? If, for example, our goodwill was 100 FC foreign currency at acquisition, We've translated this based on our rate at acquisition. In our since period, we need to translate that goodwill again, guys, based on the closing rate. And when we compare the rand value of our goodwill from our at to our since period, this difference will be FCTR relating to our goodwill. Now, important to remember, guys, and we did look at this. When you look at your NCI, and your NCI is measured or accounted for based on our fair value, remember that your investor, your parent, will share in the goodwill as well as your NCI. And in your analysis of owner's equity, you need to allocate the FCTR to your parent as well as to your NCI. And this will only be to your NCI if our NCI is measured or accounted for at fair value. Now, foreign exchange differences on net investments in a foreign operation. Okay, so guys, we have a net investment in a foreign operation. We have our parent, and our parent has an investment in a foreign operation, and this is 80%. Now, when we look at the equity of our foreign operation, the equity, which is our net assets, is FC1000. Therefore, our investor has... 80% of this, FC800. Okay. What if the entity has a monetary item, either receivable or payable? Settlement is neither planned nor likely to occur in foreseeable future. Substance part of the entity's net investment in the foreign operation. Now, important to identify that when you look at the separate financials, that this monetary item will be included in the net investment of the foreign operation. Now, if this monetary item is neither planned nor likely to occur in foreseeable future, 
Therefore, guys, we need to identify that this will then be a long-term receivable or loan. But how to account for this monetary item in this separate financials versus our consolidated financials? In the separate financials, the forex due to the monetary item in essence will be part of the net investment. Now, why do we indicate part of the net investment? When you look at our journal entries at the bottom of your table, initially we've debited our loan receivable and at year end relating to the foreign exchange movement, we will debit our loan receivable again. Therefore, at the end of the year, on our statement of financial position, we will have a line item loan receivable relating to our investment. And this is why we indicate that this will be part of the net investment in the foreign operation. Remember, if this was a loan payable, we will deduct this from the investment. But guys, you don't deduct this on your statement of financial position and indicate a net effect. Okay. The principle is to indicate that this is part of your investment. Point stop. Now, you will have to recognize in your profit or loss or in your OCI, in your separate financials or in your foreign operations financials your normal journal entries. Compared to when we look at our consolidated financial statements, IAS21 indicates to us that we will have to add an additional pro forma journal entry and we need to reclassify our foreign exchange gain or loss to our FCTR account. Now, guys, just one thing. You will identify that I do make use of the word Forex. Now, why do I do this? I just prefer the word Forex. But what is important to identify is that in your exam or your test, please rather write out foreign exchange gain or loss. Based on my experience from marking, I've identified that one year they will allocate marks to the word Forex. The next year they decide not to allocate marks because they want you to be able to identify is this either a gain or a loss. But if you want to, rather email your lecturers at your UNISA or any other institution and ensure that if you use the word Forex that they will mark this. However, my recommendation rather use foreign exchange gains or losses. Now, when the net investment is sold at a later stage, remember that your FCTR account will be an equity account. Therefore, in your statement of changes in equity, you will add an additional column FCTR. Now, we will have an opening balance and during the year, allocate FCTR from our analysis of owner's equity. And this will result in a closing balance. Now, when our foreign operation is sold, that closing balance in our FCTR account should be reclassified, important, a reclassification adjustment to our profit and loss. Therefore, we need to take this out. You will have to credit your profit or, and loss and debit your FCTR in your statement of changes in equity. And this is a reclassification adjustment. When there is disposal or partial disposal of foreign operations, in your parents' records, important to identify, guys, I've divided this into rules for our parent and rules for our NCI. In our parents' record, 
we need to take out cumulative FCTR. Now, what does this mean? We have an opening balance, we have our current year's amount, and this will result in a closing balance. Now, this is your cumulative. And you need to reclassify from equity to profit or loss. Now, we have indicated that you will have to debit your FCTR account and credit your profit or loss. And this is a reclassification adjustment. Then, with disposal or partial disposal, you will have to follow the same rules as for our change in ownership lectures. When you look at your NCI and your FCTR is derecognized, but will not be reclassified to profit or loss. Important to identify, guys, your FCTR will not be reclassified to your profit or loss. Okay? Remember, when your NCI, when we do recognize and take out, we normally work on a total amount. When there is partial disposals, you need to allocate proportionally. Then our very important table. Now guys, we did work through this in our previous week's lecture, week 9. But let's just briefly scan through this again. Remember, this is your rules. You need to study them, please. When we have assets and liabilities, we need to use our closing rate. Income and expenses, we need to apply the average rate. At acquisition equity, we need to apply our acquisition date rate. Post acquisition equity to the beginning of the period. Now remember, this will be our since period. We need to use the rate in the prior conversion trial balance. If there's goodwill, important guys, we need to treat this as an asset of the foreign operation. Therefore, in your ad acquisition, you will have your goodwill line item. And then in your since period, you will have FCTR relating to your goodwill. Why? Because we need to translate this asset in brackets at a closing rate. If there is any fair value adjustments, now remember fair value adjustments will be our revaluations as well. Fair value adjustment can either be one at acquisition or two after acquisition period. And if this is at acquisition, remember, you will have to translate this based on our acquisition date rate. If after, you need to use your closing rate. Remember, at the end of your period, Therefore, we will have an FCTR relating to our revaluation as well. And we will look at an example. Intra group items on transaction date. And if there's any transfers to reserves for current period by the foreign operation, you need to use your closing rate. 